Seeing no further introductions, therefore it's time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We recognize that the challenges we tackle and the decisions we make today bear an important accountability to future generations. This is why it was so refreshing to be in the co company of some 500 youth at their first Impact Youth Summit held in Hanover. From May 27th to 29th, young people from all corners of the province gathered in my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound and in the good company of Craig Kielberger, a social activist, best-selling author, and co-founder of Free the Children and Me to We. The event was a young people's thinkers forum designed to enhance their leadership skills while creating an awareness of mental health and well-being concerns that impact youth across all of our communities. Participants also learned about social media etiquette, public speaking and fundraising skills, and heard from motivational speaker Ryan Porter and Team Canada inline goalie and mental health advocate Kendra Fisher, and participated in a social gala dinner, much video dance, and a bigger and better challenge. I thank the organizers, Youth Roots of Hanover and surrounding area, and the summit's, summit's chief architects, Brendan Cable and Ashton Lawrence, who also inspired the initiative for hosting this successful event. I'm honoured to have had the opportunity to see firsthand how inspiring our youth are and to hear about issues that matter to them. I thank community leaders Hanover Mayor Sue Patterson, Brockton Mayor David Inglis, my colleague and friend Huron Bruce MPP Lisa Thompson, as well as all others for their support and engagement at the First Impact Youth Summit. She's a giant slayer. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased to see our youth stepping up to address the issues that matter to them and showing awareness of how they can and must play a vital role in their communities and their future. My hope and expectation is that we will see more youth summits and more engagement with our youth, who are truly our province's finest resource, here, here. and our future business and community leaders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Good afternoon, Speaker. I'd like to use the short time I have today to offer the government an idea on how to honour the families of the soldiers killed while serving their country. It's not my idea. It comes from Tom McDonald in Belleville. He wrote the Premier of Saskatchewan, Brad Wall. The suggestion is that the province create a special Silver Cross license plate, one per family, for those who lost a son or daughter in military action while serving their country. Speaker, Canada lost 158 military personnel in Afghanistan, for example. I don't have an exact number for those who came from Ontario, but I'm sure the government could find that out in short, short order. Premier Wall has asked his people to look into the idea. In Windsor, we lost Corporal Andrew Grennan on the 3rd of September, 2008. Yes. He was with the PPCLLI, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. He was on patrol. His light armored vehicle was attacked by insurgents. Three Canadians were killed that day, another five injured. Andrew's battle group was due to return home within two weeks. His mother, Teresa Charbonneau, attends our annual cenotaph services as our Silver Cross mother. I'm sure if we do this, everyone who sees that one-of-a-kind plate would thank the driver for their service, and what better way to honour the families of those who paid the supreme sacrifice. Thank you. For the member, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. Today I would like to acknowledge a recipient of the Attorney General's Victim Services Award of Distinction, 12-year-old Ellie Stones from my riding of Barrie. Two years ago, Ellie and her younger sisters were victims of a terrifying attempt at luring by a male driver. Ellie's quick thinking upon noticing his suspicious behaviour was clearly demonstrated by the manner in which she sought immediate assistance and protection from nearby citizens. Very good. As a result, police conducted an investigation and located the male, who was later arrested and charged with criminal harassment. Ellie attended court in October 2015 and testified at the criminal trial, where she demonstrated even further courage by not only preparing a meaningful and powerful victim impact statement, but she also opted to stand up in the courtroom in the presence of the accused and read her victim impact statement to the court. As a result of her testimony, the accused changed his plea to guilty mid-trial. Motivated by his traumatic by this traumatic experience, Ali became involved with the Barry Police Services and now visits various schools to teach children about safety. She also stars in Ellie's Safety Tips, a TV show that teaches children what and what not to do when faced with potentially dangerous situations. We should all be proud of Ellie's bravery and advocacy, and she is truly deserving of this award, and she's a great role model for her peers. Great young woman. Thank you. 
Member statements. Member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it's hard to believe we've reached the end, and there's so much to be said. So I hope I can fit it all in, because I could easily talk about the youth in my riding who continue to amaze us all with their hard work and their creativity. For instance, I'm proud of Gillian Byland from Hensel. She just recently received the Ontario Medal for Young Volunteers yeah, yeah. from the Lieutenant Governor. Yeah. Eric Zinn, who grew up on a farm outside of Lucknow in Huron County, who's one of the 10 OLIP interns this past year. Unfortunately, if I had more time, I could also describe how the government has made it more difficult, though, to support Huron Bruce's talented youth by eliminating the Rural Youth Jobs Service Program. Or I could touch on some important issues facing Ontarians, like living within industrial wind turbines or sharing the road in terms of road safety, the sharing economy, or the expansion of natural gas to Huron Kinloss, Kincardine, and Aaron Eldersley. But I could also talk very much about the exciting things that happen in Huron Bruce as well. For instance, the 75th anniversary of both the Huron and Bruce Federations of Agriculture. Or I could talk about McGavin's Farm Equipment's 80th year of being in business in Walton, 80 years of family tradition. And just so you know, Walton is actually the site for the 2017 International Plowing Match. Or I could talk about the 90th anniversary, if I had more time, of the Seacan Next radio station, which has been proudly broadcasting country music from Huron County since 1926. Or I could talk about, just last weekend, how Alice Monroe sponsored and hosted a wonderful festival for I'm the sure short story. Can. <laughs> so, uh, with that, in my last seconds, I just with want that? to give a, a, a quick shout out to my team. Uh, they support me unconditionally. Thank you, Jessica, Shane, uh, you. interns, Allison, Sarah, Diane, and Janet, and Lynn. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> member statements. The member from Bramley Gormalton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I am proud, Mr. Speaker, to announce that last week, Wednesday, June first. Brampton hosted the first ever Kabaddi tournament in North America. Now, Mr. Speaker, Kabaddi is a sport played across South Asia, and it's a combination of rugby, wrestling, and tag. It's a sport that's also referred to as the Maha Khed of Punjab, or the support of all sports in Punjab, in the land of five rivers. Now, the sport, this tournament, was organized by four different, four different high schools, Turner Fenton, Fletcher's Meadow, Louise Arbor, and Sandalwood Heights. Now, this sport is often played recreationally in parks and in family settings. There's also massive private tournaments, but this was the first time that this sport was played in an institution here in Ontario. Bringing the sport to Peel District School Board is a true example of celebrating diversity and inclusion. It's one thing to celebrate diversity as a fabric of our society, but it's another thing to make sure that it's included into our institutions like our schools. I want to also acknowledge that the many students that participated who were soccer players and football players said after playing this tournament, they thought this was one of their favorite sports of all times. I also want to thank all the coaches, the administration, the Pool, Peel District School Board, and all the trustees who made this possible. It was truly an amazing thing to see having Kabaddi played in our schools, a true example of diversity and inclusion. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Ottawa, Orléans. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can the government of Ontario recognize and thank thousands of volunteers through the annual Ontario Volunteer Service Award? Since 1986, Ontario, through this program, has recognized the important contribution of volunteers to their community and their continuous years of service to a single organization. This year, I attended the ceremony along with my colleague, the Honourable Madeleine Meyer and MPP John Fraser, and I'm delighted and proud to say that 37 people from the Great Riding of Ottawa Orleans were recognized. These volunteers of all ages have been dedicating their times and efforts for at least two years and up to 50 years, and that is truly commendable. Le bénévolat est tellement Volunteering is so important for our communities and for our um, organizations that make up our, our constituencies. I thank all these people who give their time. It's a big impact on the well-being and positive growth of communities in so many ways. Merci à vous. Thank you to all of you, dear volunteers, for your devotion. Volunteers, for your dedication. Merci. 
Merci beaucoup. Member Davis, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to congratulate the citizens of Prince Edward County. For years, they fought their own government over a project that they claimed would harm the natural environment on the South Shore. It turns out they were right. They were actually right three times, Mr. Speaker. The first environmental tribunal ruled that the project would cause irreversible harm to the environment. The Ontario Court of Appeals upheld that ruling, and now, after a second environmental review tribunal was convened to determine whether the harm could be mitigated, the tribunal determined that it couldn't. The government's environmental experts have now been asked to weigh in three times. All three times, the experts have said this project is environmentally destructive. In their ruling, the ERT stated, to proceed with the project when it will cause serious and irreversible harm to animal life, a species at risk, and its habitat is not consistent with the general and renewable energy approval purpose of the EPA protection and conservation of the natural environment, nor does it serve the public interest. When the experts were asked to judge the government's argument that renewable energy trumped protecting the natural environment from destruction, they found the argument lacking. Speaker, it's time that the insanity of this policy and years of conflict it has wrought across Prince Edward be brought to a swift and immediate end. There exists no rationale for any project on the county's south shore. All of the ones currently planned for the area will be as or more destructive than the project that just had its approval revoked. The continued expense by the province, both in time and money, fighting the people of Prince Edward County should be Thank used you. elsewhere. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm especially honoured to stand today in the House to congratulate Newmarket's St. John Chrysostom Catholic Church on its 170th anniversary. This past Sunday, there was a wonderful church service presided over by His Eminence Cardinal Carter and a great gala afterward. The church is one of the oldest in the Archdiocese of Toronto and I'm told the second oldest in Newmarket. It's closely linked with desperate Irish immigrants fleeing the fa potato famine and settling in my riding of Newmarket Aurora. Being resilient and hardworking, the Irish community flourished and built the first church in 1839. Today, St. John's Chrysostom is a vibrant and active faith community. Dedicated parishioners are known for their outreach and their community building. And it, it's a clear strength of the church. Uh, it also comes from its leadership. None better demonstrates this than its two retiring pastors, Father Robert Ouellette and Father Miro Milicek. Father Ouellette, Father Bob to all, grew up in Toronto and was headed for a career in dentistry when he heard the call to become a priest, choosing the pearly gates over the pearly whites. <laughs> After 19 years in Newmarket, Father Bob will be missed. Father Miro was ordained a deacon at Our Lady of Grace in Aurora in 1982 and a priest at St. Michael's the next year. He too will be missed after spending 19 years in the parish. Thanks to the priests and parisher, uh, parishioners of the church for your ongoing devotion to your church and our town, and best wishes in the next 70, 175 years. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, bicycling is an increasingly popular mode of transportation across Ontario. Bike Month 2016 is being celebrated this year between May 30th and June 30th with a number of campaigns and events. We encourage you to get involved with events in your area and help spread the word. We, must already, we have already had a great deal of success across the province, but especially in Brampton. Bike to Work Day on May, Monday, May 30th had many participants, along with Bike to School Week, the week that, in celebration of cycling and active transportation, with the goal of increasing the number of children who bike to school. Students throughout the region of Peel and Brampton and Brampton Springdale participated in large numbers, with prizes rewarded for registered participants of the Walk and Roll Initiative by the region of Peel. Many other events have taken place, including Bramley Cycle Fest that started at the All People's Church and others that are planned, such as those organized by Bike Brampton, including the Biking Builds Communities interactive sessions taking place at five libraries around the city. Next weekend, I will also be taking part in the Bike the Creek event on June the 18th. I welcome everybody to join me for a fun day of cycling while exploring the natural beauty and heritage of Brampton and Caledon. Bike the Creek 2016 showcases the Etobicoke Creek, uh, the Etobicoke Creek Trail, and the Fletcher's Creek Trail, Brampton and Caledon's natural valley lands, parks, stormwater ponds, and Brampton's historically significant sites, the Beauvert House and Memorial Arena, and the Dominium Skate Factory. I hope to see you all there to celebrate Ontario's Bike Month. Let's get rolling. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.